Live from Vancouver, Canada, it's theCUBE. Covering OpenStack Summit North America 2018. Brought to you by Red Hat, the OpenStack Foundation, and its ecosystem partners. Welcome to SiliconANGLE Media's coverage of OpenStack Summit 2018. This is theCUBE, we're on day two of three days of live coverage. I'm Stu Miniman here with my co-host, John Troyer. Beautiful city here in Vancouver. There's been a bunch of parties last night, community things going on, and to help us kind of set the stage for day two, happy to welcome back to the program Lisa Marie Nampy, who's an OpenStack ambassador and also now a developer, developer advocate with Portworks. Lisa, great to see you. Thanks for having me back. Always fun to be here. All right, so you're wearing a new logo since the last time we <laughs> talked. Uh, why don't you bring us up to speed on some of the many hats you're wearing these yeah, days? Yeah, I joined the team at Portworks uh, a few months back. Super exciting, cloud native storage. If you want to run stateful applications like databases in containers, that's where Portworks comes in. So it's a great space, as you know, and as you know, I've been you know, in the cloud native space for a long time, and uh, so I'm very happy to join the, the team at Portworks. Yeah, I, I, I love, there's, uh, there's the open dev stuff going on here at the show. There was a keynote this morning, heard Boris did, did a nice job with this. We'll actually have him on theCUBE tomorrow uh, to talk some more about this, but you're at that nice intersection of you know, how do developers fit into this? Containers has been a hot discussion here for, for a few years. That whole cloud native term that you brought up, what does that mean to the OpenStack community? Maybe give us your level set as to what you see happening here in, in the OpenStack and beyond. Yes, you well, know? as you mentioned, I am, I'm still an OpenStack ambassador for North America and so and have been for a long time. So I have seen this, this change coming and this progression. Super exciting at this conference, how they've embraced those technologies that have, that have been part of the story, but they've really embraced in a, in a very um, a, a serious way, as you saw from the keynotes yesterday, all of the other technologies, uh, like the work to be done around containers, like Edge, you know, IoT, all of these wonderful stories um, that, are, that are getting showcased at this conference, and customers and partners and communities coming together and working together, I think that's the most exciting part. Well, Lisa, you run the, the, the meetup formerly known as the uh, Bay Area OpenStack meetup, which just changed its name. Can you talk a little bit about that? Yeah, well we just thought, you know, I started, I was looking at, at our, our schedule, and over the last few years, I think I've run 18 meetups on Kubernetes, and Docker, and Mesos, and, and I just felt like, you know, networking, and storage, and, and all of the stuff we showcased, IoT, we didn't feel like the name was really reflective of the content that we were delivering, and cloud native and open infrastructure is, is a more of a broad term term and that's the content that we've been delivering and that's what the community has been wanting to talk about and wanting to come together over. So I changed the name right. and yeah. You know. well, and you guys have had having great success, right? It's the, one of the biggest or the biggest meetup meet in this space. I, I, it yeah. is, yeah. It's the world's largest <laughs> user yeah, yeah. group. Um, we have over 6,000 members and, and what I, you and know, I did. people show up every They month, do, right? yeah. I get the and I sent yeah. a nice note to everybody. I didn't want anyone to panic yeah. and I was like, we still love OpenStack. And remember, OpenStack was the foundation of this. You know, it was the first OpenStack meetup, but OpenStack is at the core of, of all of this technology. So it, it's built on OpenStack, OpenStack's inside, um, and so it, it's, it's just open infrastructure is a better, more encompassing title. No, I, I think that's, that's great. We actually, in some of the interviews we did yesterday, uh, we had a uh, cloud provider from Australia. And you go look around their website, it's not like they're saying, you know, hey, OpenStack, all over the place, it's their infrastructure as a service for government, and when you dig down underneath, what do you know, there's OpenStack there. Talk to a number of software companies that when you dig into their IP, it's like, oh okay, we're using one of these projects from, from OpenStack. So the premise I had had a few years ago is, we know open source is a bunch of tools out there and it's not necessarily just like Linux permeated throughout the data center. That's, OpenStack has that opportunity to be that next generation of helping us to build you know, everything from infrastructure as a service to all of these software products that are inside. Absolutely, and you know, we saw during all those keynotes yesterday all the different projects, and when they, when they did show you know, what was being shown as a demo, all these projects coming together, maybe even only two of them said you know, an OpenStack project. It's all of these communities coming together, working together, and it's kind of, it's changed because everything's been focusing around business problems, and this is I think the biggest shift at this show. You you know, these, these user communities not being so focused on the project that they're working on, but really focusing on use cases and trying to solve business problems. And you know, I haven't said this to Lauren and Jonathan, but I feel like when they pulled the design summit out, I think that went a long way to taking away the project focus, you know, because when you had the design summit and everybody went off into their room to talk about Cinder or Nova or whatever it was,
was, you know, argue about the next release. You, you know, that has all been removed and that's happening elsewhere and it really let the community kind of come together and work together and, and bring all the technologies together. Mm -hmm. What do you, th uh, speaking of the conference in general, what's the vibe here? This, uh, this, I mean, obviously we're in a beautiful place. Uh, everyone's really kind of stunned by the mountains everywhere. Not the first time uh, OpenStack Summit's been here in Vancouver. But what's the vibe? How, what's the feeling? What, what yeah, it like? oh, it's so yeah. great to be back in Vancouver. Yeah. I, congratulations on the trained <laughs> whale that you've got to be <laughs> freeze framed behind us. Um, at Vancouver, I mean, yay Canada. It just, yeah. everyone yeah. has been so nice, so wonderful. It's so beautiful. We're all extremely happy to be back here. I think the summit's been going great. You know, I mean, <laughs> Hey, Energy's there's non-dairy options at the coffee stations. <laughs> I love that too. They've thought of everything. Yeah. The marketplace was booming last night. We had a little ambassador stand where people could come up and do a meet and greet. And you know, I was like pinned there. We, there were so many people coming by for the whole hour. The energy has been wonderful and everybody feels involved. You know, this is a very communal feeling to this summit. Great, so t tell us about Portworks. Give, it, give us the update there, how that fits into what's happening at the show. You've been, lots of shows lately, you got more coming up in the next month. Absolutely, I mean it's, you know, people just think, okay, if it's OpenStack Summit, is it really going to be relevant? I have so many customers here. It's been fantastic, you know, to, to catch up with people. Um, and Portworks is, it's a startup uh, out of the Silicon Valley, based in Los Altos. Um, and we have, you know, we're almost 100 customers now, and uh, live in production, running Kubernetes in production. And the problem with, when you wanted to run those stateful applications, you know, people think of containers as, as stateless, traditionally, particularly Kubernetes. But, you know, what are you going to do with the data, right? The database is still super important. So whether it's Postgres, or MySQL, or, or Kafka, or Cassandra, those stateful applications are really important, and that's the problem that Portworx solves. It's a cloud-native storage company, but it's really, it's really beyond that. You know, things that you would expect from traditional you know, VM, high availability, things like that. We can solve those problems if you want to run Postgres in a container. And we work really closely with, with Mesos, they resell us with um, the Kubernetes team, with Docker, we'll be at DockerCon <laughs> together <laughs> next week. Um, and so we're actually doing a, a, the next meetup in the San Francisco Bay Area. First one, uh, we're going to bring all these groups together. We're doing it in conjunction with our friends from CodeFresh who run the um, production ready containers, uh, used to be Container 101 meetup. Uh, so we're getting together with them and, and with our cloud native open infra user group. Um, and so we're going to do a meetup on June 6th at the Portworx office. I hope you guys come. Great. So, you, I mean, you said there was a lot of, uh, so going back to the conference, the business users, you know, folks who actually need to get stuff done, anything you're looking at in the conference in terms of the news, the Queen release is out, but so in terms of the technologies you're hearing talked about, buzz, the, the VGPU stuff, or, or I don't know what all the different, I, I know there was a lot of uh, some other storage news coming out this, this week, but anything that you guys are you're yeah, hearing is uh, in the air? I mean, around kind of, again, the, the adjacent technologies, mm -hmm. Kata containers, uh, big focus here, and um, I hope that they're going to be uh, a big focus. Uh, I, I hope I can finally run the first ever Kata containers meetup. Um, we're going to have them do a hands-on lab at our OpenStack birthday party event on um, the 8th. I put that in quotes because it's like a half-day hands-on labs trainings. It's, um, sorry, the 10th, July 10th. We want to focus on Kata containers. We want to focus on some of the new technology, Acrano. You heard them mention it yesterday. That's coming out, Edge, so Edge technology. Is, is huge. Um, Beth was on stage again, right, talking about what, what they're doing. Um, Open Dev as a as a subtract of this conference, or however they however they say that, um, is super exciting. I think uh, Boris was on stage this morning. Um, Marantis is a sponsor of that, and uh, and I think the Open Dev community is is really um, it's bringing you know it's 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 bringing the kind of the developers and the technology back into the fold, and and, and having this kind of uh, you know unconference or subconference going on as a track, which is fantastic. I'm speaking tomorrow in the container track, container infrastructure track. Um, so super excited that that's also a track. So that, that's what I've loved about this conference, about how they're you know they're really focusing on these kind of new and up and coming areas that are super hot. All right, well, Lisa Marie Nanfi, really appreciate you helping us kick off day two coverage uh, so much. It, the, these, these blendings of these communities helping the, the users put together the overall solution to get done what they need to get done. Yeah, bravo, OpenStack, OpenStack Foundation. They've done a fantastic job. I think the, the energy at the summit has been fantastic. All right, well, we've got a full lineup today. Uh, we, we've got practitioners, we've got uh, the ecosystem, and uh, for John Troyer, I'm Stu Miniman. Thanks for watching theCUBE.